okay. This is something I had to deal with. Well, I've never seen that before. This is something I had to deal with. Before I, before I lay me down to sleep, this is something I wanted to deal with. I wanted to deal with this uh, Robert F. Smith commencement speech and the cryptic nature of it. And I want to talk about the possible ramifications of what he was saying to us. Now, remember now, Morehouse is a HBCs, one of the more famous HBCs in the United States, and it is strictly for men. Okay? I want you to hear what he told these young men at the very end of his commencement speech. And first off, I want to acknowledge and the gesture that he did and paying off all of these young men's student loans. 40 million plus is what he pledged to pay to take care of every graduate of 2019 uh, student loan debt <clears throat> okay now i'm going to play this clip for you i want you to check this out just a moment i want you to hear this clip and I want you to judge. I'm not going to be on here long because it's really late where I'm at. It's almost 12 o'clock. It's just about 12 o'clock. So let me get this started. Uh, let me see if this is the one. Yeah. Pleasure to present to you our commencement speaker for the morning, Dr. Robert. Don't they be dressing these uh, faculties and chancellors of the college? They be dressing them up just like Masons, y'all. You know? They really be dressing these people up like Masons. Now, why this is all, well, let me, let me not say that. But uh, let me fast forward this. I want you to hear this. See your brother right there. He to take care of our now, now listen to what he says, y'all. He said, we are enough to take care of our own community. That's what he says. I'm not hating, but that's what he said. Now, watch this. Through our actions, through our words, and through our deeds, we're going to show that we are good enough. That's what he says to the graduating class of 2019. Just hold on a second. The shoe is going to drop soon. 
Now listen to this part very carefully. You heard that? And may God always hold you in the cradle of her hand. That's what he said. Okay, you don't know if I, he really said that, and I'm just adding. So let's play it over. Now, let, let watch this, y'all. Let, let me get this, too. It's a lot of this I could have chopped up. I, I could have, we could have listened to, but listen. Look how that guy right there is bucking his eyes. He can't believe this guy is going to pay everybody's. And that is a tremendous gesture. But let's keep going. Now, why did I play that? What was the significance of, of why I played that? Because I want to show you something else. I want to show you something else. Look at this. Now, this is his wife. This is his wife right here. He got the whitest wife in the world. And he said we could support each other. Look how white his wife is. Her last name, it looks like an Eastern European name. He went and found the whitest white woman he could find and married her. And guess what, y'all? She's not even on his level. She's a Playboy model. This guy's an engineer with several PhDs, a billionaire. All she is is a newscaster and a Playboy model? He didn't even get a white lady that got a degree comparable to his, an education comparable to his. He went got a lady who run around naked with Hugh Hefner. What is wrong with black people, man? Now, listen to what he said in his speech again. Now that you've seen who his wife is. <laughs> I'm, I want to show more of this. Now, look at this guy down here bucking his eyes. Watch this guy start bucking his eyes. I mean, he is astonished. Notice that the white guy ain't standing up hugging nobody. Watch this guy right here. And 
at the bottom left hand corner. Now he said, eight generations, y'all. You know what that you know what that implies, y'all? That implies that none of his family were slaves. He could trace his gen he could trace his ancestry back eight generations. This guy is an outlier. He's not the average black person. If he could trace his generations back eight generations, that's way past 1863. I mean, four generations is like 1920. 1910, 1920. He could trace his generation four more generations beyond that. Now, the only group of other people that could do that are Caucasians. So this guy has a really storied and privileged background. If he could take, trace his generations back, eight generations. Let's keep going. Look at him bucking his eyes, y'all. They like shocked. Now it's all black men here. It's Morehouse College, okay? All black men. And and, and I'm gonna let I want to tell you something. There's a lot of homosexuality at Morehouse College. Now look, listen to this, y'all. How are they going to play this forward? This guy's a billionaire, okay? This guy is a billionaire. With an unusual background. If he could trace his generations back, eight generations. But he want people who come from a single parent home to play it forward and follow his example, basically? Come on, y'all. Come on. He, he not being realistic, you know? And to me, I think he knows that. And I think he's just up here grandstanding. Yes, he's going to pay it, but I think he's grandstanding. I think he's trying to shame these people, the alumni. And look at this, y'all. He's not giving the money to the, the college. He's giving it to the students. That's interesting. He's giving it to the students. He ain't giving it to the college. Because HBC colleges are infamous for stealing money. So not only is he, is he insulting the alumni, probably none of them are billionaires. He's slapping in the face the faculty of Morehouse College. 
by subverting them and giving the money directly to the children, the graduates. This brother right here is stunned. He, he can't close his mouth. Y'all hear that? He said, we are enough to take care of our own community. But he's married to a white woman. When he died, her whole family is going to blow up. So. How can we ensure that if we marry white women? Huh? We're going to show it to our others, to each other by our actions, by marrying white women. That's probably 30 years younger than us. And when we die, her whole family is going to be rich. It's going to, all the money will go right to Europe. You heard that? And may God always hold you in the cradle of her hand. Now, if he believes that God is a woman, that's a problem already. But then you gotta ask yourself, if he believes God is a woman and he's married to a white woman, do he believe that God is a white woman? He's telling all these young men, and this is the cryptic part of the message that got my attention, okay? This is the cryptic part of the message that got my attention. Let's, look, let's listen to that again, one more time. Uh, Because we are enough to take care of our own community. We are enough to ensure we have all the opportunities of the American dream. And we will show it to each other for our actions and for our words and for our hands. The class of 2019 and the sun always shine for the moon. And the way almost the actual black. Now, may God always hold you in the cradle of her hand. Listen to that, y'all. What's the cryptic part of this message? Hold on a second. Let me get there. I want to see what's going on here just a moment i just want to get to the chat room okay let's see here uh, Okay, let's do this. Got that. Got that. Got that. Got that. 
Okay, I'm here. So the cryptic part of this message is this, you all. The cryptic part of this message is this. He's telling a whole class of black men that God is going to hold you in the palm of her hand. In a cryptic way, this man is telling these black men, you need to be like me if you want to be successful. And you got to have a white woman. Why would he be thinking? And why would he be telling these young men that they're going to have to have a black woman when he's married to a white wife? And then when he start talking about God, he say, God is going to hold you in the palm of her hand. Well, if in the marriage relationship between a man and a woman, and the man is God, and the wife is the wife of God, thereby making her a God too, and he's married to a white woman, why would he think or try to project to these black men, and he's a black man with a white wife, a billionaire, why would he try to project to them that they need a black woman to be successful? You see what I'm saying? Really interesting. And all that stuff he said about the wind be at your back. Well, the only person that controls the wind is God. And if he believed that the wind is controlled by God and God is a woman and he's married to a white woman, guess what he's saying? that a white woman is gonna put wind, she's gonna be the wind beneath your wings. He's not saying that no black woman is gonna be no wind beneath your wings. Let me, let me play that over. Let me play that part right there over. Let me tell you this, y'all. This guy don't live in no black community. If he's a black billionaire, he don't live in no black community. So there's a disconnect between what he's saying to these young men that who mostly probably come from single parent homes and a, and a few bougie little homes. He can't even relate to the bougie. This guy's a billionaire. See, when, when when our black people get rich and become billionaires, the only thing we think that's run, that's living for is running after the American dream instead of running after the covenant of the Most High. We let me tell you this, this whole speech was basically about building up white supremacy. He's he want he's here to encourage the graduating class of Morehouse. Black men. To support white supremacy. And he's standing here as a monument. To the success if you are faithful to white supremacy. May the sun always shine upon you. Now we know in the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter one, the God, the most high, uh, what on the fourth day, he's, he's, he created lights in the sky. the sun, the moon, and the stars. 
But this man believes that the person that did that is a woman. And the impl the cryptic part of it is that he believes that it was a white woman. Because that's who he married to. Listen. May your white wife give you wind at your back and motivate you because a black woman ain't going to motivate you. That's what he's telling these guys. It's already implied because everybody there knows he's married to the whitest woman in the world, an Eastern European woman. So the wind at your back is going to be coming from a white woman. So he's cryptically telling them, get a white woman. A black woman is counterproductive. He's saying that there's more compatibility with a white woman than with a black woman. To this graduating class of black men. Keep going. In the cradle of her hand. This was a slap in the face to black women. And this was a slap in the face to any black man who's looking for success in life. And is joined in a covenant to a black woman. Really, 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 really interesting. There's a lot of little subliminal messages people be sending us and we don't even see them or hear them. We think just somebody giving a commencement speech, but in reality, what they're really doing is they're programming us. They're giving us subliminal messages and innuendos. But anyway, I didn't want to come on here and stay a long time. I just wanted to show you that about this Robert F. Smith cryptic commencement Morehouse College message about female God. Just, just astonishing. And I wonder how many of those young men picked up on the message. I wonder. Probably a handful, y'all. People get so bedazzled. People get so bedazzled. Oh boy, I can't even say it. Bedazzled by rich people, their minds shut down. They don't know what the person is really saying for real, for real. They just surface listeners. But to listen in this manner, you got to have the Ruach, y'all. You really do. You got to have the Holy Spirit to be able to hear what people are really saying. Not just with their words, but with their actions, with their lifestyle, and when they say stuff. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. This is Prophet Roe Nabi. Family prophet of the angel of the church to the land of sin, signing out, saying shalom.